In today's video, I want to show you an alternative to the built-in HTTP client that we have in .NET. This alternative is called Refit, and I'll show you how it makes consuming HTTP APIs extremely simple. We're going to start by building out an integration with the GitHub API using the native HTTP client that we have in .NET. And then I'm going to replace this with Refit, and you'll be able to see how Refit can simplify things. So let's first start from the GitHub API. This is the first endpoint that we are going to call, and it returns the public information about a user with a particular user name. We need to provide an authorization token, and you can create a personal access token for yourself through the GitHub user interface and you can also see in the documentation what an example response for this endpoint could look like and what are the fields that the response contains. So let's go back to our code and integrate with this endpoint. What I prepared beforehand is a GitHub settings class with three properties, the base address of the GitHub API, the access token that I got for the GitHub user interface, and the user agent, which you need to pass as an additional header. The value, for example, could be your GitHub username. I'm also configuring the values for the GitHub settings from my application settings, and I'm also validating my settings class when my application starts. Now let's add a class that's going to be our typed HTTP client, and I'm going to call this the GitHub service. In order to make this a typed client, I need to configure it as such, but I'm going to start by injecting an HTTP client instance. Now this instance is going to be provided to my class, pre-configured with the base address and all of the required headers, and all I need to do is just call the respective endpoint on the GitHub API. So let's expose a public method that's going to return the GitHub user type, and this is just the strongly typed representation of the endpoint's response, and I'm going to call this method get by username async. Now we're going to need just one argument, which is the username, and then I can go ahead and call the GitHub API using my HTTP client instance. I'm going to call the get from JSON async method and I'll specify the GitHub user as the generic argument. The GitHub API is going to return a JSON response and I'm going to serialize that into my GitHub user type. I said I'm going to configure the base address, so all we have to do is call users and append the user name. And here I can just return the user and because this could be null, I'm going to make this explicitly nullable. Now let's go back to our program file and expose a quick endpoint that we can use to test out our GitHub service. Let's use the same route as the GitHub API, so users slash username. I'm going to capture the username into an argument, and I'm also going to inject my strongly typed HTTP client, which is my GitHub service. I need to make my delegate asynchronous, and then let's implement the body of our endpoint. All I'm going to do here is say await GitHub service, get by username async and just pass the value of the username and then let's just return results ok user. I'm going to return an ok response even if the user is null because that's not what I want to focus on in this video. So let's continue with registering our typed HTTP client. I need to call the add HTTP client method and specify my GitHub service. And now this is configured as an HTTP client and additionally, I can provide a delegate that allows me to set the other properties on the HTTP client instance. So what I'm going to do here is resolve my GitHub settings options object by saying service provider get required service. And I'm looking for an I options instance of my GitHub settings. I'm going to grab the value of this object and let's store this as a variable. And now I can access the HTTP client and set some properties. So let's set the base address to the settings base address value. Then I'm going to configure some default request headers. And for example, I can add the authorization header and I'm just going to pass in my access token from my GitHub settings. And I'm going to do the same for the user agent header. So let's pass in the user agent value and then the header name is user agent. Let's give our API a try and see if this is working. Here's the Swagger UI for our user interface, and I'm going to specify my GitHub username and call the endpoint. And you can see that I get back the response from the GitHub API, and it contains the public information for my GitHub profile. So this is going to be our starting point using an HTTP client, and now I'm going to try to improve on this design by using Refit. 
Refit is an open source library and it's pretty popular. It has almost 8,000 stars on GitHub. And what it allows you to do is to define an interface and then Refit is going to generate an HTTP client for you based on this interface. Refit brands itself as the automatic type safe REST library. I've used it on many projects in the past when I needed to integrate with an HTTP API and it really makes the entire process simpler. So let me show you how we can use Refit. I'm going to start by adding the Refit NuGet package. So let me look for Refit. And I'm going to install the refit HTTP client factory package because it makes it easier to use refit with dependency injection. To define a refit client, you just create an interface. So let me go ahead and create an I GitHub API interface. And all I need to do now is expose methods on my interface. So I need a method returning a GitHub user and let's call it get by username async. It's going to have one argument, which is going to be the username. And then I need to decorate this with a get attribute, which is going to come from the refit namespace. And I just need to specify what is the API endpoint that this method should be calling. So this is going to be users slash username and refit is going to replace this username value with the username argument in our method. And this is all I need to do to define an HTTP client. I also need to configure this with dependency injection. And you'll see that the configuration is very similar. I need to say add refit client, and I'm going to specify my I GitHub API interface. Then I can call the configure HTTP client method, and I'm going to provide the same delegate as I had here to set up the base address for my HTTP client and the required headers to authenticate successfully with the GitHub API. And now I'm just going to replace the GitHub service in this endpoint with the I GitHub API. The method name is the same. So let's start the API and see if the refit implementation is functional. I'm going to call the same endpoint on our API and pass in my GitHub username. And you will see that we get a response back this time using our refit client. If we compare these two implementations on the amount of code that you need to write, you can see that the refit implementation is significantly simpler. All I needed to do was to define an interface and expose the methods which represent the endpoints that I want to call, as opposed to the GitHub service, where I need to inject an HTTP client and then manually call these endpoints. On the configuration side, they are basically the same. This uses the native HTTP client implementation, and this one calls the add refit client, but otherwise the configuration is the same. Refit can also use delegating handlers. So if I go ahead and add a delegating handler to handle setting the values for the authorization headers, this delegating handler is just going to grab the GitHub settings object and set the values for the appropriate headers before sending the request. If you're not familiar with what a delegating handler is, it's like a middleware except for your outgoing HTTP requests. How you use a delegating handler is by configuring it with your HTTP client. So I'm going to get rid of these two lines of code, setting the default request header, and I'm going to say add HTTP message handler. And then I'm just going to specify the GitHub authentication handler. And this delegating handler is going to execute whenever I send requests with my GitHub service. I also need to add this to dependency injection as a transient service. So I'm going to say add transient and specify the GitHub authentication handler. The same approach also works with refit because it just uses the HTTP client under the hood. And I can also say add HTTP message handler and specify my delegating handler implementation. And now let me quickly show you how this works. If I send a GET request to our API from my Swagger user interface, you'll see that we first hit the breakpoint in our minimal API endpoint, and we're going to use our GitHub service. If you take a look at the value that's provided here through dependency injection, you can see that this is a generated type. The name is a bit funny, but it's just the name of the type and the name of the interface. Now, if I try to navigate to this type, let's see what we have inside. This is an HTTP client that is generated by refit, and you can see that inside we have the methods that we define on our interface implemented in the auto-generated client. This is what executes our code under the hood and ends up calling the GitHub API. So if I try to call this method, you will see that I hit the breakpoint inside of the delegating handler first, which is going to set the appropriate authorization headers. 
and only then it's going to execute the API request. So if I hit continue, we're going to get the response back in our Swagger UI containing the user information. Now let's implement calling another endpoint on the GitHub API. This one is used to update the authenticated user. The route is just slash user. So you're basically updating your own profile. And this is a patch endpoint that you can use to set some values on your profile. And for example, I'm going to update the bio on my profile. If I head over to my actual GitHub profile, which I'm going to be updating, this is the bio value here. So let's update this to be something new. I'm going to define a type for my update bio request and it's just going to contain the value for my bio. Because this is a patch endpoint, I can just specify the values that I want to update. And then implementing this with refit is just exposing another endpoint on my GitHub API interface, decorating this with the appropriate HTTP attribute. In this case, it's going to be patch and then the route is slash user. I'm also going to pass the update by a request using the body attribute, which means it's going to be sent as a JSON body when calling the API endpoint. Additionally, I'm going to accept an HTTP response message from this endpoint to make sure that we have a success result. Now let's implement a simple minimal API endpoint to call this new method on our GitHub API client. I'm going to call map patch and then the route is going to be users slash bio. I'm going to have two arguments in my request delegate. The first one is going to be the update bio request, and the second one will be my I GitHub API. So let's call it the GitHub API. And then in the body of my endpoint, I'm going to say var response, and then I'm going to call my GitHub API by saying GitHub API update bio async. We're going to pass in the request. Additionally, I want to call the ensure success status code method on the HTTP response message, which is going to throw an exception if this isn't a success result. And then I'm just going to return no content from my endpoint. So let's go ahead and call this and see if it actually works. Here's the Swagger UI, and this is my patch endpoint. Let's specify the value for my new bio. This is my existing bio on GitHub. And let's update this to tech YouTuber, for example. I'm going to send this request and we get back a 204 no content response. Now I'm going to navigate to my GitHub profile and you can see the old value is still here. So if I refresh this, you can see that the bio is updated and it has the value that I set using the patch API endpoint. I think refit is awesome, but if you want to learn what is the right way to use the HTTP client, then you should watch this video next. Let me know in the comments what you think about using refit in .NET, and until next time, stay awesome.